Well, good day, all. I Rapstein, and here we are with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this wrap up is for Wednesday, the 11th of October, 2023. Well, on the uh, war front in Hamas, uh, Israel, you can see the jets keep bombing everything in their sight. I'm starting to see the first satellite images of the destruction that's being done, and it's definitely extensive. There's an event that I'm going to hate soon. And that is, you know, I've been against Israel going on the ground and door to door to destroy Hamas. I think that's just a trap waiting to be sprung on them like a bad B movie, and it's going to be terrible. I also am concerned that when you unleash the soldiers, they'll be savages. They saw their people beheaded, things of that nature. How do you control 300,000 soldiers? You can tell me they're a great fighting force, maybe. Uh, in their mind is the hate. And now there's plenty of innocent Palestinians there. You know that. They're not all bad people. Come on. That, that, That isn't the case. So I am concerned about that. On a positive note, let's get away from that. Uh, President Biden is calling for more money immediately for the border. He tied it together to Ukraine and Iran. Yes, he's come around. Got to put the three together. On a negative note. Steve Scalise was nominated by the Republicans, and I'm not against Steve Scalise. What I'm against is how the vote went. He only got half the Republican vote. McCarthy got everything but 30 votes. This man got only half, so he got 70 less votes, roughly. Um, That isn't good. So if, if he goes behind that closed door to make all the deals, what makes him any different with that group of eight that didn't vote for McCarthy? Because they're going to be there again with their same demands from him. I don't know how this gets resolved. I'm not a politician. I don't think you're going to have a Speaker of the House anytime this week. I, I want to go on record saying that. So we'll see. I want to be wrong immensely. This is a trade I want to be wrong. I want us to get a speaker. I want things to get done. Uh, But I don't think that that's necessarily going to happen. You got to get an awful lot of Republicans and then you got to get the Democrats to accept them. So who knows? In the time of war, strange things happen. Maybe people come together. Which brings me to the last thing that I had to say. All day long, I I take sometimes a walk. I took my walk today at about 2.30. And I'm walking through the park. I happen to live in a gorgeous neighborhood where there's parks and everything and watching the kids play soccer. Uh, I live near an area where Michelle Obama went to high school. And um, to make a long story short, going, why now with the war? Why did Hamas do it now? I said, I, I, the planning took place and it's been going on for years. That, that is, we know, we, we know that Iran's been backing them. But why now? And I went, ah, it had to be Yom Kippur. And the more I think about it, nah, that might be a little part of it, but they could have done it right on the holiday. That's a better statement. I, I think it got pushed off of that for whatever logistic reasons the, the brains behind this had. But I think it all has to do with the United States, Israel, and Saudi Arabia. Obviously, their intelligence being, they being Iran's intelligence, said they're very close to a deal. You can't allow this to happen. That changes the landscape. And they unleashed the dogs. That's what I think happened. Do I know it? Not even remotely. Am I guessing? 100% guess but it makes so much sense. All right. So today we had PPI numbers come out. The headline number was hot, but not the one X food and energy. That was flat. That's what the market wanted to see. And by the end of the day, another day where we were up in the stock indices. So my stock index special report that came off the website Monday, should have taken off Friday, but I want everybody to see it, so far on the money. I was looking for us not to exceed that October 4th, if you remember those lows, I was showing you on a day-to-day basis what the seasonals, the 30, the 15, and the five in all the four major stock indices are likely to do. And two, just like I wrote it and had the the numbers ahead, it's done. it. Now that doesn't mean we're going one-sided. Often October is a month that is super volatile. The biggest decline month of the year is often, not always, September. One of the most volatile trading months of the year is October. And then after that, I look, and I don't mind telling you, for the market to stabilize and try eventually to bring home Santa Claus. We will see if that is the key or not. 
So if tomorrow's CPI number is flat or lower, and I'm talking core, why would the Fed raise interest rates? There's no need. So I think that's out of the question right off the bat. November 1st, why would they, and that's their meeting. They'll look at the PCE number, but the weighting of the PCE and, and uh, CPI might be enough to keep them off. But how far can the market go before it's got to consolidate this gain? That's the other thing. That's part of the indices, and then you go to the individual stocks. So in utilities, why did they come alive? If you watch what interest rates are doing. The 10 years gone from 4.9 to roughly 4.6 may go down to 4.4. 4. Comes alive. The enemy of that is it. Have we ended this break? Absolutely. And I told you that I thought so when you took out this high. When you get these type of moves and you suddenly take out a prior high, watch out. And you, it came with a huge outside day up. So again, if you've taken my outside day course, I promise you, you're... you're, you're Antenna went outside day, break, not a continuation pattern. A pattern says there's a good chance that ended. And there you're getting the other stop outs and the Johnny come lately's that want to be a buyer just because they want to own utilities. And typically in markets that are trying to make a turn, utilities get popular. When we take a look at uh, the swing line, you can see how it's laid itself out. When we take a look where it might go, why not here? When markets are up hard, they often go back and fight a battle at an 18-day average. When they're down and they come up trying to figure out, they'll do the same. I wish I could tell you it's every single time. It isn't, but it's a real lot. I don't mean 50%, 60%. I mean, it's a real lot of the time. So I have every reason to believe that come that 18-day average, wherever it comes in tomorrow, if the market rallies, that'll be the resistance area in the market. In terms of other moving averages, they're way up here. So I'm not seeing anything. The Bollinger Bands are far away. And you lost the embedded reading. Uh-oh. This is what I want you to pay attention to. You get an edge by paying attention to momentum. Now, let me get this and see if I can get it to... Yeah, there we go. It's just getting caught. What happens is, in my belief, I, I, I've got to clarify this. I believe momentum leads price most of the time, most being 90% or something, right in that range, not 70, 80, most of the time. And because of that, because momentum leads it, while the market might be down, like right here, you still have the embedded reading. Both numbers are still sitting under 20. If you've taken my course, you get what I'm saying. You can see the day before they were that way too. All of a sudden, you're not. That tells me that it's time to, number one, you're not deploying short money. You're covering if you're short out of it. You've lost your bearish momentum. The only time you can get it back is if literally the day after you lose this, you embed again. That doesn't mean you have to take out that low. It means you come down and you embed again. So this number would have to close again under the 20 level. It's so rare. It happens but it's very rare. So I put on my thinking hat, where might this market go? First thing I know is, hey, me, if you were sitting next to me and I'm teaching you, I'd going, you can't be short anymore. The market, if it's going to hold, the objective is wherever the 18-day average is before it gets down under the most recent low. It's the first thing you'll learn from me and why in the course and how to do all this. Let me come the right way. Here we are. This is Tuesday and this is today. So do I think we're going to do it? I do. I do. And from there, now the market has to consolidate that to tell us what next. In Rivian, told you the bottom pickers were coming out against the 200-day average, and they were. I, I read in the, in the journal. I read in Barron's article. I'm reading all the articles. I get the market watch. There's so many things I get and how many people like this stock ultimately. I don't like it the way they did. I liked it before. I loved it when it got up here. And then when they said they were refinancing with convertible bonds, I got disenchanted right away because convertible bonds under certain circumstances dilute stock. And boom, away the market went. And that's how they had to get the financing they need. Let it work through that and get behind the market. In UGA, the trend is certainly still to the downside in gasoline, but 
Staying under the first challenge of a 200-day average is difficult. You're embedded. I never teach, and I'll share that with you, I never teach to go short underneath the first challenge of an average like that, even though you're embedded. When you lose the embedded reading, I think you'll get up to wherever this is, but there is a problem in this market, a bearish problem. Why? Because this 18-day average, if the market doesn't rally right away very big, is going to cross under the 100. And now you got even more resistance coming in at 67.08. You're at 61.89. I know you'll tell me, hey, right, that's a 10% move. And I agree. That's a move all by itself. But it's going to be uh, a lot of resistance over the market for a prolonged move. Just sort of like you're rallying on XLF. The market lost its embedded reading. I thought you'd go to the 18-day average. You did, and you have stopped on a dime. When I look at XLI, you lost the embedded reading. Market turned, went up. Now, it went through the 200-day average now two days in a row. So that isn't going to be the resistance point. It was for a bit. It certainly was on the rally back here. But it's more likely if the rally continues, it doesn't have to as it's overbought. But let's assume it does. The big resistance is the combination of the 100-day average, 105.15 and wherever the Bollinger Band comes in, which will be a little lower to probably be 104.91, right in that area, 104.80, something like that. In AI, this is the exact what I just showed you. On this chart, I told you I thought the resistance would be up here. On this chart, you just got there, and the market stopped like it hit a brick wall. So these are the things you learn in that enhanced Bollinger Band course. And the ideal thing is you take the name off the chart when you're learning. Why? I don't want you to have a preconceived idea. I want you to trade a pattern. Once you learn the pattern, what gets in your way is the name of the chart. Believe it or not, that is what happens. And you'll go, oh, yeah, I get that. I'm coming in with an idea. I, gee, I want to own NVIDIA. I, I, I got to do this. And you throw away everything you learn because all you know is you want to buy it. Those are the things that happen. You're in a resistance area void of a trend. RSP. I keep hearing people say today, I was listening very carefully. I was flipping between Fox, CNBC, and Bloomberg all day today. And I'm watching and I'm going, wow, look what they're saying. They're talking how strong the consumer is and they're not impacted by this rise on interest rates. These people could be no, no further from the truth of what's going on than what's happening to the average person out there. Mortgage rates are resetting in many cases. You've got a 24 to 29% credit card rate. You've got student debt that's being paid. You're getting foreclosures on automobiles that is going one way up because people can't meet their car payments. And you want to tell me the consumer is super strong. No, they are not. They have gone through a lot of the money from the COVID. They are not super strong. One proof, prime sales, the prime day. It just ended today, right? The average sales weren't up. They were, yesterday, they were $38 average. People were buying down. That should tell you something. So I'll let the other guy have their day. Maybe they're right. Maybe I'm so wrong. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I got it wrong. I get a lot of things wrong. But that's what I, I think. A um, lot of resistance up here if the market could rally. But right here, it's just a congestion. Now, if it wants to get bullish, it gets back over yesterday's high, not today's. And that might lift the market. I could see that as a chartist. I have bragged about home builders, how I think uh, they have figured out the game and they know how to buy down to get you into a house. They build for you. The word is home builders. This is not realtors. This is home builders, how they can work with you and get your mortgage numbers down for the first or second year, maybe 5%, something similar to that, so that you're able to refinance afterwards. It's a game. You think it hasn't gone on forever? I have, I got gray hair. I, at least I have my hair. Um, I've seen this. I saw my parents do it. I, I mean, that's how these things work. Uh, XLE. Lower highs, lower lows, how the market's given a bounce off here. But energy's in a problem until you get up and you close over yesterday's high. Once you do that, folks, please be careful. You get this market back through. Let's see if I can get this here. Here's where we want to go. Yesterday's high was 
89.29. If you close over that number, which is also would mean you'd be over the 18-day average of closes, you'd have higher lows, higher highs. If you fall instead, big support 85.02 to 84.99, the combination of a uh, one 200-day average and the 100 with the Bollinger Band. I mean, you've just got so many numbers right there that that's a big support area. GLD. All I have been looking for in gold after losing the embedded reading is right here, 174.09. Take a look at the high today. That's all it was done. If you took the enhanced Bollinger Band course, again, you understand this. In SLV, you lost an embedded reading. Did it embed? Let's check. Don't know myself. Day one, two, Three, you're embedded. You lose it before you get back under here. I contend it'll hit the red line, the 18-day average, 2046. You hit 2027 today. That number will drop a little tomorrow. Copper, all you did is where I thought back. So one of the things when I came back and I was telling subscribers, I said, in the copper market, you had lost the embedded reading. I said, golden week is over. The copper traders show up. The first thing they do is buy copper been through this, seen this over and over. They buy things they need, they haven't been at their desks, and that's about all that you went to. Now the market's gotta prove which way is next in it. In TLT, short covering rally that should run into a lot of resistance here. When you lost the embedded reading, which was yesterday, by the way, I had my clients, by the way, the wrong way in this market. So if you think that I'm such a win-win-win, not, not the way at all. I told them the day before that uh, I was bearish. I wanted to sell the rally. And then when you lost the embedded reading, I said, uh-uh-uh-uh. Now here you don't have the embedded reading lost. Are you ready? Out. Where do I think it's going? I think it's going back to the 18-day average. Ready? That's what you learn with some of this, all right? Is, it, is everything always right? No, no. If, if I, I don't walk on water, nobody does. But more times than not, you're going to get an edge. UUP, you lost the embedded reading here. We're looking for the 18-day average. I've set it to each day here. And finally, it hit it. And the same thing, you flip-flopped here, but you were almost right on it the day it did it. So it's a little different. Last, we get into what are the markets as a whole trying to do, where well, they're trying to teach you things. You have to understand and be a student. If you don't understand the basics of how to work with the most simple tool, the enhanced Bollinger Band course, the combination, it's the combination, it's not the Bollinger Band, it's the combination of the two that makes it unique, and it's my version of slow stochastics, which are different than the ones you're using on the chart. I modified mine. I, I, I learned it from the guy that created slow stochastics, George Lane, and I became a big student. And then I went to him and I said, George, I have a different way to do it. And I showed him what I had come up with and he goes, you're onto something. And I've been that way ever since. And, you know, once you bring it to the guy and he says, no, you're not on the wrong path. He goes, no, you're onto something. And bingo. And that, that happened, obviously, a long time ago. He was quite a character. Good guy. So to make a long story short and all this, why not learn? That's what this is about. So if you go to our website, irapstein.com, under education, what a good word for it. You'll see that, that course. Move your cursor to the top here. It'll take you there as well. I'm Ira. Invest in yourself. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care. Welcome. I'm Ira Epstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, 
If you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.